Motor Week is made possible by Lucas Oil and TireRack.com. Motor Week, television's automotive magazine, with your host, John Davis. Hello, and welcome again to Motor Week. You know, some cars just never die. They don't even fade away particularly when there's no current oil shortage to make people nervous about gas mileage. For proof, there's our first road test subject, the old and still new Chevrolet Caprice Classic. After that, something definitely new from Japan's Isuzu, their sexy little sports coupe, the Impulse. Pat Goss will have some new maintenance advice, and Joyce Braga has the latest on a sizzling new version of the Audi Quattro. But now, as for this old, new version of the Chevy Caprice Classic, this big family sedan is definitely holding its own in the market. And this at a time when most cars seem to shrink each time a new design is introduced. It seems that downsizing has become a national epidemic. And this poses a problem for the big family. They just can't fit into the incredible shrinking car. But some big cars are still hanging in there. In fact, some of them are selling better than they have in years. Witness our ever popular family sedan up next. This car is a member of the third best-selling lineup in the U.S. for the 1983 model year. It's definitely not a compact. It's not even an intermediate. It's the full-size, 116-inch wheelbase, 17-and-a-half-foot long, six-passenger, rear-drive Chevrolet Caprice Classic, a real throwback. But in fact, sales of the Caprice and the base Impala have done so well of late that for 1984, GM has brought back the two-door coupe. That one was discontinued only one year ago. Along with an eight-passenger wagon and our test four-door, it provides a full array of affordable big family cars. But since size is relative, so is that word affordable. Cost for the standard Chevrolet begins at $8,500, with our loaded classic at $13,000. But similar size cars of more upmarket makes are thousands more. And for those conservationists who find it deplorable that any big motor car is still at large, take heed. Our Caprice with a 5-liter V8 and a 4-speed overdrive automatic transmission is rated by the EPA at 17 miles per gallon city and 28 highway. Our test mileage loop of 21 is twice what the similar Chevy model of a decade ago could have managed. That is progress. And that's not the only place where today's big Chevy has improved. Gone is the marshmallow ride and roller coaster dip and sway of old. Here to stay is a smooth yet controlled posture. While still soft, it displays a decent amount of chassis competence. The Caprice feels more agile than it should for its size. Though it reacts slowly to all steering inputs, it doesn't take long to master even a tight, fast slalom. And if you have to dodge any typical suburban obstacles, such as pets or ash cans or daydreaming drivers, it can be done promptly with no special driver's training. But if you'd rather stop first and swerve later, the typically easy to lock up GM power assisted braking system will do it in a mostly straight manner. While front end dive might make you think you'll wind up on the hood, there's no rear end swing and only a normal amount of disc drum fade. Halts of 141 feet, on average, from 55 miles per hour, were within our acceptable range. Like the chariots of yesteryear, the interior of this full-size Chevy is wide and plush, with seats that offer thick cushions, if little in extra side or lower back support. Yet head, leg, and shoulder room, which is why you'd buy this car, is ample for three adults in the front and three more in the rear. The back doors are long and tall for easy entry, and enough knee room is maintained for even oversized backseat drivers. The dash is also a bit of a throwback, with plastic wood side to side. Despite four circular instrument cutouts, readouts are limited to engine coolant, speedometer, gas, and a ubiquitous fuel economy indicator. Luggage capacity, despite the strange placement of the spare tire, is characteristically huge. Standard power for the Impala Caprice is a 3.8 liter V6 with a 5.7 liter V8 diesel optional, as is the 305 cubic inch eight cylinder of our car. Accessibility is a mixture of good and bad. 
Belts are a snap to change with filter and dipstick locations obvious. Yet the spark plugs can only be easily reached if the car is up on a lift. At least that isn't required but once every 30,000 miles. Given the 3,850 pound tonnage of our four-door, we were pleased at how well the small block V8 automatic combo moved the Caprice along. A zero to 60 time of 13.9 seconds is normal for a family car. The four-speed gearbox shifts much more smoothly than other recent GM cars we've tested and downshifts less frequently. Also less jarring is the locking and unlocking of the torque converter. We judge its 40 to 55 mile per hour passing time of 5.4 seconds, again within our acceptable category. But those who want to enjoy big rear drive style will pay some penalty when trying to maneuver in a parking lot. Our Caprice took a full 38 feet of pavement for a curb to curb turn. However, that's not bad when you consider a lot of smaller front drive models don't do any better. So the big family car still lives, at least for a while longer. And when their time does come, it's sure to be a sad wake. Replacements for the Caprice and cars like it will be much smaller outside while retaining most of the interior room. But they'll also be more complex to build and service and undoubtedly much more costly to buy. Then the big family car buyer will have a whole new array of choices. But unlike the Chevrolet Caprice Classic, the new versions may never again completely fill those big family car needs. <laughs>